Hello everybody, this is Tekka. What I'm going to be talking about is Fedora Silver Blue. Now, I've been using it as my primary Linux distro for about 30 days, and I'm gonna be reporting to you guys how it went, what I liked and disliked about the system. Before we get into that, we must first talk about exactly what Fedora Silver Blue is. Fedora Silver Blue is a spin of Fedora that is immutable. This essentially means that the root operating system is read only and the entire root system should be identical from one install to another. Apps are installed through flat packs because those do not manipulate the root file system at all and updates are handled by updating the read only file system. This also works thanks to a technology called OS tree. This is somewhat similar to having a Git repo used as your root file system. This allows you to do things like install a developmental image to test some things out and then just revert back to the previous image when you are done testing. Some other systems that are similar to this structure would be something like iOS or Chrome OS where the root file system is read only, but you can still install apps on top of the system. The Steam Deck is another system that takes advantage of something similar where it is arch based, but it's also image based, meaning the updates are just new images, preventing the issues Arch can cause where things just randomly break. Fedora Silverblue is unique though, thanks to RPM OS tree, which essentially allows you to layer packages on top of the stock OS tree system image. Now this does not affect your current system when you install a package, but it does create a new file system root that will be used on the next boot. Now, what I'm trying to get at with all this, basically, if you try to run DNF install NeoFetch, for example, it will simply say the command does not exist. But you can also create containers with DNF packages using Toolbox, which creates a container that allows you to install DNF packages in. While this isn't that useful for general package management, because you would need to do some weird hacks to get GUI apps running, such as copying and pasting a .desktop file and editing it to run from the toolbox. This is very useful for developers as you can create multiple toolbox containers for different projects and install multiple dependencies for different libraries in those toolboxes, which this can make developing for multiple libraries much easier. All of these things combined make it a great option for somebody who just wants to get work done without needing to maintain their system at all. But it can also be a bad option for somebody who absolutely loves tinkering with things. Now with that lengthy overview of what it is, let's dive into some more of the specific pros of a system like this, and we're going to start with stability. Because everybody running Silverblue is going to have a file system that is functionally identical, testing for updates will be a lot easier because it mitigates a lot of the it works on my computer type bugs that some people will have. It prevents accidental system file damage, so it also removes the possibility of having dependency issues on certain packages since apps are going to be in a container separate from the actual system. Secondly, updates are almost invincible because you can download a new silver blue image in the background that you apply next time you boot, providing a very fast and speedy update to the system. This read-only file system is also more secure because if there's something fishy on your system, it can't just go into your root system and start infecting your system and files and things of that nature. And of course, there are cons to this system. You probably noticed some of them mixed in with the pros. Uh, because it is a read-only system, you do need to reboot every single time you make a change to the OS tree image, or like I said previously, every time you want to update your system. This can get really annoying, even doing some basic things. For example, if you want to install NVIDIA drivers, you need to update your system, reboot, install the RPM Fusion repo package, reboot, and then finally install your drivers and then reboot. That is three reboots to do what is a rather basic task. This can be mitigated on the app front by using flat packs, but that could get annoying if you're trying to do something you typically wouldn't use a flat pack for. An example of that would be using some command line utility or system tool. 
As mentioned earlier, Toolbox can also be another workaround, but you need to update the applications and packages separately through the Toolbox container, and that can be hacky, especially if you're trying to do this with uh, GUI apps. On top of that, there's a lot of weird things and workarounds you might have to learn to get around the file system limitations, even if you're trying to do something that really isn't that advanced to your system. When it comes to a learning curve, it all depends on your familiarity with Linux. If you're a new user, it might actually be easier because you don't know much at all and you're not trying to change habits. If you are a tinkerer, you might find it very annoying. It all just depends on who you are and what you do. There is some figuring out to do, but it's really not all that crazy. For me, using it for the last month has been just that full of pros with some minor annoyances. Personally, I just can't get used to not being able to jump into the terminal and interacting with a normal package management system. But for most people who don't use their computers as tinkering toys like I do, this is a great operating system. With Flatpak, you essentially have nearly all the software you'd ever need, and grabbing a Flatpak of one of the extension manager applications will give you some access to some GNOME customization. And when it comes to the restart requirement, it doesn't consistently push you to actually restart your system like some other operating systems do. So with that, what do you think of Silverblue? Is it the future of Linux and operating systems in general, or do you think the idea is absolute insanity? Why? Let us know down below. Uh, with that, I'd love to thank the wonderful folks on screen now who helped me make this video, and big thanks to those who support the channel as a member or Patreon. I hope you all have an absolutely beautiful day, and goodbye.